Lesson 1.3, The First Amendment. Previously, you learned that we live under a democratic form of government, or a democracy, where the people of the country have a say in how the nation is run, and that that is a good thing. You also learned that having a free press is an important part of making democracy work. The free press is so important that when the Bill of Rights were established, the very first amendment to the U.S. Constitution was partially about the right to free speech and a free press that can't be bossed around by the government. In case you've been living under a rock, this is the first amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Did you get that? Let me put it in other words. It's saying that those that we elect to make our laws like Trey Martinez Fisher here, our state representative, um, who happens to be a Holmes High School graduate, those that we elect to make our laws aren't allowed to make any laws that make a specific official religion. There can't be an official American religion, and they also can't make laws that keep citizens from practicing their religion. And here's where journalism comes in. They also can't make laws that take away freedom to speak your mind. Or laws that don't allow the free press, that's, that's us, newspapers, media outlets like that, to do their job and speak out. Or laws that keep people from peacefully gathering and even protesting. And you might be wondering just how important is it that this amendment protects the freedom of speech and of the press? Well, it's important enough that all of these important leaders in American history said these things about it. We'll also give you a little history quiz to see if you recognize some of these famous faces. You should know this guy. Do you know who this is? If you guessed Thomas Jefferson, you'd be correct. Here's what Thomas Jefferson had to say about the freedom of the press. This is one of our founding fathers, and he said, Where the press is free and every man able to read, all is safe. Or how about another founding father, this guy here with the sweet haircut. Again, let's see if you know your history. Do you know who this is? I'll give you a hint. He's only the second president of the United States. This is the guy after George Washington. If you guess John Adams, that is correct. So the second president of the United States, John Adams, said this about the freedom of the press. He said the liberty or, or the freedom of the press is essential to the security of freedom in a state. It ought not, therefore, to be restrained. I'm guessing you probably don't recognize this guy. But who knows, you could be an expert in U.S. Supreme Court justices. So I'll give you a try. Do you know who this is? You want to take a guess at it. It's not Oliver Wendell Holmes, I'll tell you that much. If you guessed Supreme Court Justice Hugo L. Black, which I'm assuming you probably didn't, then you are correct. But that's okay. I wouldn't have gotten that question right either, so I'll let it slide. But here's what he had to say about the freedom of the press. He said, only a free and unrestrained press can effectively expose deception in government. Are you getting the picture? It's important stuff. Maybe you recognize this group of gentlemen and what they're doing. I'll give you a second to take in the image and see if you can guess what gathering, what group this is and what's going on in the picture. I'll give you a chance to guess, test your U.S. history skills. That's right, this is the Continental Congress, the group that would later be responsible for all our founding documents and ideas. It's the Continental Congress, not the Continental Breakfast, which is delicious, but you might have noticed Ben Franklin in there and some other characters important in U.S. history. These guys wrote a letter, and in this letter, they had this to say about the freedom of the press. 
they said the last right we shall mention regards the freedom of the press. The importance of this consists, besides the advancement of truth, science, morality, and arts in general, in its diffusion of liberal sentiments on the administration of government, its ready communication of thoughts between subjects, and its consequential promotion of union among them, whereby oppressive officers are shamed or intimidated into more honorable and just modes of conducting affairs. They're talking about the freedom of the press and its importance in helping the citizens have their representatives do the right thing. We could go on and on. This guy, John F. Kennedy, the president, said, Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed and no republic can survive and that is why our press was protected by the first amendment not primarily to amuse and entertain not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental not to simply give the public what it wants but to inform to arouse to reflect to state our dangers and our opportunities to indicate our crises and our choices to lead mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Strong words about the freedom of the press and it's important. And let's go back to this guy. Do you remember his name? Thomas Jefferson, he had a lot of things to say about freedom of press. He said this, the basis of our government being the opinion of the people, the very first object should be to keep that right. And were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter that every man should receive those papers and be capable of reading them. He said, even more important than the system of government we have is the freedom of press. That without the freedom of the press, we can't have a democracy and we can't have that power and freedom that comes with it. These men knew how important freedom of the press and freedom of speech would be in a democracy and they were right. Without freedom of speech and freedom of the press, we may never have heard of the atrocities that Nazi Germany carried out on millions of humans throughout the Holocaust. Without freedom of speech and freedom of the press, many of the key events of the civil rights movement in America would not have been seen or heard, and those important changes may never have occurred. It was important then, and it's important today. You may be wondering, what happens when there isn't freedom of speech and of the press? Believe it or not, there are places in the world right now where free speech and freedom of the press don't exist. Places like North Korea, China, and in Russia as well. For instance, these three men, as I'm making this video, are journalists that are currently being jailed in Egypt right now just because of freedom of speech and, and not being allowed to, to have the freedom to voice their opinions. It's going on all over the world. The First Amendment is a promise that you can say what you think. It's also a commitment to allowing journalists to research and find truth even if it is in our own government and report it to the world. As a journalist and even as a student journalist, it's important for you to know and understand the First Amendment.